Hello and welcome to the Revelation class. We are on session 21. We will be studying chapter 12 tonight. The woman, the child and the dragon. So it is going to be very interesting. This is one of the chapters, very interesting chapters in the whole book of Revelation. So here are the basic things that we need to go over. So we started with the seven sealed scroll. And the seven sealed scroll has a seal judgments, the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments. So here is the picture to show you what is happening here. Seven seals, seven trumpets and seven bowls. I am not taking too much time to recap these things. We have all these things recordings available um, in the previous sessions. So here the seven seals is, there, is stretched out. So, uh, in my mind, when I look at this, all this, so when the seventh seal is open, um, so it is all done. But where does the seven trumpets fit in? So, everything has to fit in within the seventh seal or before the seventh seal is done. So, that is how we have all these things stretched out to show you to accommodate all these things. So, do we know exactly the timelines? We do not know. So, but all these things will be completed. So, for example, last week we completed the seventh trumpet and when we saw the seventh trumpet, well, let's go there. So, we will see those. In chapter 9, uh, that is session 18, we studied the fifth angel, that is the fifth trumpet and we saw a star fallen from heaven. And the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying the sixth angel who had the trumpet. So, we have the fifth trumpet and we have the sixth trumpet and then in chapter 10 we see the pause again. So, the between the sixth and the seventh and we studied this chapter 10 in session 19 the little book and we studied this in detail. Um, John was asked to eat the book. So, I am not going to explain those details now. Please watch session 19 for those details chapter 10. And then in chapter 11, last week we studied about the two witnesses. So, that is that can be found in session 20. And in uh, chapter 11, we saw John was given a task to measure the temple. And then we have those two witnesses doing uh, miraculous things. I am not going to tell you who those two uh, witnesses are. Please watch session 20 for answers. When the seventh trumpet is blown, that is in the fifteenth verse, then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. And He shall reign forever and ever. So now we completed that pause and then we went to the seventh trumpet. When the seventh angel sounded, so we see there is celebration going on in heaven. So there are loud voices just like if you went to go to a party room, what do you hear? You have a lot of sound going on, right? So same thing here. So we and the seventh angel sounded loud voices in heaven. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. So you may be asking, John, you are you still in chapter 12 and you are already celebrating and you are completing everything. That's what I keep saying. So when the seventh angel, when the seventh trumpet is blown, so pretty much it is all done. But where does the rest of the material fit in? The rest of the material will be in parallel with all these things. So, so but John has to write somewhere. So he is writing after the seventh trumpet. But uh, technically speaking, all of these things will be done by the time we say we finish, we come to this point. But for the order that it was given in the book of Revelation, we complete the seventh trumpet and then we are going to study what happened during that time, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like going through all that. So when the seventh trumpet is blown, so there was celebration is going on, noises and all that. And then in verse 16, and the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God. Now everything was done, everything, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of the God, of Lord and Savior. And now what are the 24 elders? Again, we studied who these 24 elders are in chapter 4 and chapter 5. So they represent the church. So the church, uh, the 24 elders fall down and worship God in Revelation 11 verse 16 
And now in 17, what are they saying? We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. So God has taken it, taken the power back from Satan. You remember Adam sinned and uh, uh, Satan took the power and because Satan was ruling this earth, he was even ch challenging Jesus uh, to say, you worship me, I'm going to give everything to you. So now here by the time we come to this place in the book of Revelation, uh, Jesus have taken everything back. So that's why these 24 elders were worshiping and praising God for uh, the power and their reigning with him. And now in verse 18, the nations were angry because now Satan has lost control. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of uh, the dead that they should be judged. And now that is what uh, happening. The whole nations will be judged. There will be wrath of God poured on the earth. Um, uh, we can, you can study all this in the last session. And verse 19, then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquake and great hail. So all of these things are happening because the earth is judged on one side and then the heaven is celebrating on the other side. You can watch that on a split screen if you will. And now with that said, so let's start chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12. So um, here in first verse it says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven. So underline the word sign. So what you are, it is a sign. It is not a real thing. So you, when, when the book says it is a sign, take it as a sign. When the book does not say as a sign, don't take it as a sign. Because a lot of people, when they read Revelation, they just switch whatever they want. Uh, when they read 144,000 um, uh, Jewish believers or Jewish evangelists, they say, oh, this must be the church or whatever. So don't do that. So here it says it is a sign. So now a great, a great, again, the word Greek word megas. We studied this word earlier, this megas, mega voice, loud voice, which is a megaphone. That's where we got the megaphone from. Same uh, root word here again. Now a great sign, a sign here in the Greek word, it is a simeon. So now a great sign appeared in heaven. So John was looking into heavens and he saw this great sign. What is this great sign? What, what, is, what did he see? A woman clothed with the sun. Hmm, that's interesting. So here he see a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. This is a remarkable picture. He sees a woman and he sees all this uh, description here. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars. So again, keep those things, underline those things because these are very important for us to understand who this woman is. And verse 2, Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So here this woman is pregnant, so ready to give birth to a child, that's what we see here. So then being with the child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So now, especially in this particular chapter, I'll be going back and forth. I'll be skipping some verses, going ahead and then coming back again because I have to make all these connections. So just bear with me when I'm going back and forth because if I'm explaining one particular word, I have to connect all the verses that comes with it. So I have to jump across and then go back and then again come back to the previous section. So if you see me going back and forth, that is the reason because we need to study every word in these uh, uh, verses. So uh, a woman clothed with sun, moon under her feet and a garland of 12 stars. Being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Uh, if you go to a baseball game or something, you know, they introduced all the players, right? So it's the same thing here. So all the end time key characters introduced here, seven symbolic players introduced in chapter 12. The woman, the male child, the red dragon, Michael, rest of her offspring, the beast from the sea. This is 13th chapter. So I changed the color here. So we're going to study in chapter 13, the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. So if you count all those, those are seven symbolic players, seven symbolic players introduced in chapter 12 and chapter 13. 
Uh, so let me recap the woman, the male child, the red dragon, Michael, uh, rest of her offspring. Those are the things that we are going to study tonight in chapter 12. So God willing, next week we will study the beast from the sea, the beast from the earth, chapter 13. So with that said, so who, this woman we are going to look at tonight and we are going to study about this woman. But the question, who is this woman? Uh, let me give you some possible answers because there are people who study the same book, same material, but they come up with different answers. So the possible answers, some say because she is giving birth to a child and later you are going to realize that child is Jesus Christ based on other scriptures. So some, uh, especially the Roman Catholic Church, even today they believe that it is Mary. The woman that is shown in chapter 12, they believe it is Mary because who gave birth to Jesus. Some denominations believe the church of all ages represent the woman. Some believe that it is the nation Israel. And uh, we are going to see how the Old Testament interprets um, about this particular woman from the Old Testament. And then there are cult leaders. Every time you see something, there will be cult leaders. You know, there, are, there have been several female founders of cults who could not resist the temptation of seeing themselves pictured in this woman. So they just go out and say, I am this woman. So just then, and then gather a, a big following. So there are cult leaders. There have been several female cult founders of cults who could not resist the temptation of seeing themselves pictured in this woman. So always be careful. So now with that said, I'm not going to spend too much time on all other possible answers, possible uh, so solutions. But let me straight go into the scriptures and see what we find. So now I am going to Genesis to find out who this woman is. So Genesis chapter 37, verse 5 to 7. We, know you, we are all familiar with the Joseph's dreams. And in verse 5, 37, verse 5. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. You know all the story, those Joseph's brothers, they hated Joseph for everything. And on top of it, Joseph knew that they were hating him, but yet he goes and tells him their, his dream. So that is where we pick up the story. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. Verse 6, So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheave arose and also stood up. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheave. So, is it a good idea to go and tell the brothers, especially when they are already uh, hating him, and now go and tell that my sheep bow down to your sheep? Not a good idea though. But then let's see what happens in verse 8. And his brothers said to him, Shall you, or, shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9, Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have a dream. Another, uh, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So Joseph got this second dream and now he goes to his brothers. Already those who are those, uh, they are hating him uh, even for the first dream itself. And now he goes and tells him another dream. And here... He say, he tells them, look, I have dreamed another dream and this time the sun, the moon, the eleven stars bowed down to me. The moment he said that they understood what he is saying. So because of the, of the usage here and now let's see how this is interpreted by his father. Verse 10. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, so pause for a second. I don't understand how jo Jacob rebuked Joseph for having a dream. Is it, it, is, it is not in his control. He was sleeping and he got a dream and Jacob is rebuking for having such a dream. So I don't, I can't understand why he is doing that. Anyway, father rebuked him and said to him, Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. You see, it is very remarkable. The moment Joseph told the dream, he told about the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars, Joseph, uh, Jacob immediately understood. So here, Jacob, Israel, uh, understood the meaning of it, and immediately he's saying the meaning here, saying, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother 
and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you and his brothers envied him but his father that's Jacob kept the matter in mind although it was puzzling to him how he might be wondering why should I and his mother and brothers will go and worship or bow down to Joseph but look at the last word but his father kept the matter in mind being a godly man being he had an encounter with god you remember that he struggled, uh, struggled one night whole night um, you know unless you bless me i will not let you go and so he had good encounters with god so now although he, he did not understand the whole meaning of course he understood the meaning but he did not realize what is going to happen but his father kept the matter in mind this this goes very close to what mary had when mary uh, was given the news about jesus birth she kept everything in her heart it says so although she did not understand how it is all going to happen but she kept it in his in her heart so same thing here we see uh, the meaning so now what has happened here the sun the moon and the 11 stars what happened to the 12th star we studied just now 12 stars in revelation but now here we are seeing only 11 stars the 12th star is who joseph himself so 11 stars include now you add joseph to the 12th star so joseph will be the 12th star so the father the mother and the 12 stars does it make sense so genesis we have the meaning of this the sun the moon and the 12 stars so because this is very important for us to understand the scriptures especially when you get to revelation chapter 12 and what you are going to decide about that woman the identity of that woman is very crucial for understanding the whole book of revelation and in fact for the for the matter of the whole book of the bible itself so how do we make it make sure that we are interpreting it correctly because we are checking with the scriptures instead of our own thinking so when we go to the scriptures joseph had this dream and father interpreted it for us and clearly here we see um, the meaning of that is uh, given here shall your mother and i and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you so basically it is all talking about the uh, israel or it talking about the jacob so the identifying marks of the woman are the sun moon and stars these belong to israel as seen in joseph's dream so that is the key that we need to understand the woman is a sign in heaven although her career is her here on earth she is not a literal woman she is a symbol the career of the woman corresponds to that of israel for it is israel that gave birth to christ who is the child so does it make sense the woman travailing in pain giving birth to a child and now here it it, it gives it makes sense israel that gave birth to christ who is the child while it is true that mary gave birth to jesus it is also true that jesus the son of david from the tribe of judah came from israel in a sense israel gave birth or brought forth jesus christ some have understood her to be the virgin mary but a symbolic meaning is clearly intended with the harlot of chapter 17 if you make a, um, because in if you go to chapter 17 we are going to study that in the future so when we go to chapter 17 there you are going to make that woman another woman there uh, uh, the harlot mentioned there as a symbolic meaning definitely you are going to make it as a symbolic meaning so the point is when you make that woman as a symbolic meaning in chapter 17 the same should apply here and that is the point so this is a symbolic woman not virgin mary that is the point we need to take it there and others think that the church is in view but it did not in any sense bring forth jesus so so you can clearly make a case here when people say no that woman is church no the church is not bringing forth jesus right so that is not how it works the church is a virgin bride and here this woman is pregnant oh oh so that is not going to work and so you know so that is a very clear uh, distinction there so the church is the virgin bride of christ so that is why virgin mary is not the right uh, choice here church is not the right choice and just like as we studied in genesis israel is the right choice and the best understanding is that these 
Luminaries identify the woman as the symbol of Israel as explained in Joseph's dream. So now we know who that woman is based on Genesis passage and the, uh, Joseph's dream. The woman is Israel. But who is this child? Now, of course, we alluded to a little introduction about the child. But who is this child? So in verse 5, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. So verse 5 makes it a little bit clearer for us to identify this child. So this child, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. So there are several passages in the Bible which tells about the Messiah, Messiah who is going to come and rule all the nations with a rod of iron, which, which symbolizes with authority. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Who was caught up to God and his throne? Of course, we are going to see the, uh, the, the full description. Of course, Jesus died and rose again and he was taken up to heaven. So uh, we are going to see in a little bit more detail on that. Here is a passage from Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. So here is a prophecy of a Messiah coming into this world. The same prophecy was given, uh, mentioned in uh, Matthew also and also in other Gospels. In Micah chapter 5 verse 3, Therefore, he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. So, we, so Micah still continues and he clearly makes a case and saying that she who is in labor has given birth. So there are other passages I'm going to show you also about the, um, Israel uh, having uh, Israel being identified as the woman. And now let's look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven diadems on his heads. So now we know the woman uh, identified as Israel. The child as Jesus Christ, the Messiah, even prophesied in the Old Testament. There You can read Psalm 2. We just read Micah. And if you read Gospels, Gospels always quote the Old Testament passages. So we have a lot of passages identifying the child. So now with verse 3 says, there is another sign appeared in heaven. So this time it is not the woman. This time it is a great fiery red dragon, which has seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. So who is this dragon now? So his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. It's a very graphic description. So the woman was ready to give birth and we identified the woman. And then we have this dragon, red dragon, waiting to devour the child as soon as it was born. And this dragon was mentioned in verse 4, his tail drew a third of the stars. If you remember our pre previous discussion, the stars represent angels. And when Satan fell, well, we saw that the, uh, the Satan uh, brought down another one third of the angels from heaven to earth. Okay, verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. As I said, I'm going back and forth to connect these dots. So now in verse 5, again, we see about the male child who was to rule all the nations. And now the woman's child was a male child who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Clearly, this is describing Jesus. But if you look at Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 9 and 9 to 11, Jesus ascended to heaven. So Jesus, uh, after resurrection, he appeared to several people. And after he rose again, he appeared to all his disciples and others. And then he was ascended up uh, into heaven. We can read that in uh, Acts. Now when he had spoken these things, in this is Acts chapter 1. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, 
who also said men of galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven this same jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will all will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven so first case is that we are identifying this male child and male child uh, he was taken up into heaven that is jesus we saw that but there is also a second uh, understanding so sometimes as i said the prophecies have multiple fulfillments or multiple uh, times it it can be applied so the first application clearly is the male child identified as jesus christ because he is the one who is going to rule over the nations with a rod of iron so that uh, and then that makes it clear very clear that it is jesus christ and also he was taken up to heaven uh, to the throne of god so now in verse 5 we saw the, we see this for the second application just be careful don't get confused what we identified that this male child is jesus christ because he ruled with a rod of iron he is going to reign and then he was taken up so that point is clear so now let's look at the same verse again she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up you know the word caught up it's a harpazo in greek you know the word that is rapture it is very interesting word choice so somebody pointed this out so i wanted to bring it to your attention the word choice here used is her part so not the regular taken up so her male child was to rule all the nations with rod of iron and her child was caught up that is her part so it is rapture um harpazo is greek so that is where you got the rapture raptura so and her child was caught up to god and his throne so now what am i going to do with this so let's look at uh first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 here this passage you are all familiar with this passage because this talks about the rapture In 1 Thessalonians Paul writes to this church and here he writes in verse 17 then we who are alive and remain shall be what caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord so here you look at the word that is used caught up that's harpazo that's the same word that is used for the child harpazo and here for the church to be caught up together to meet the lord in the air again the same greek word harpazo is used so it's very interesting and now when you actually look up in acts what happened when jesus was ascended up into heaven it is not harpazo so that is what i'm trying to point out now when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up this is not harpazo look at apairo so this is a different word apairo is a different word from harpazo this is used to taken up because the difference between these two greek words is here in this case the apairo that is used for jesus when he ascended up into heaven he was not snatched he was not taken by force he just willfully he was just taken up he is just uh it's like something he himself is going up that is a pyro but when you use the word harpazo that is taken by force snatched up so that is used for rapture so you see the difference so in acts the word used is a pyro and uh, and here let's read with that understanding now and when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight here jesus was not forcefully taken up or not snatched up to heaven he just went up and a cloud received him and while they looked steadfastly toward him as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel who also said men of galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven we studied this before so the now the difference i'm showing you is the word harpazo and apairo so there are other passages here that tells us Uh, that we are the body of Christ so now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it first corinthians chapter 12 verse 27 so the application we are trying to make up here is the male child clearly represents jesus christ but who is where is what is his body the body is the, the you are the body of christ so the male child is jesus christ i am not denying that fact i am still saying that the male child identified as is jesus christ 
but the second application makes it really interesting because of the words used in her part so and also the church is the body of christ it can be also applied to the rapture so it's it's very interesting when you look at in that angle so now uh, here in first corinthians it clearly says that um, about talking to the church you are the body of christ and individual individual members of it we identified the child now let's go to verse 9 In verse 9 you shall break them with a rod of iron you shall dash them with pieces like a potter's vessel so this is in psalm 2 9 so the talking still about the reigning and ruling of the uh, the child and also here you may wonder so if you say that the church is also in view of this child so how does that help us to see um, about uh, the ruling with the rod of iron right so when you become a child of god you are joint heirs with joint heirs with jesus christ we know that right so when you become a child of god you are going to reign with him and in fact in revelation first chapter and second chapter we studied that you are going to sit on his throne and you are going to rule reign over the nations so now even if you apply the child to jesus christ and also to the church it still makes sense that because as part of the church you are going to reign with him second timothy chapter 2 verse 12 makes it clear if we endure we will also what reign with him so even it's not just applied only to that male child that's jesus christ but also to his body that is the church so that is my point i was trying to help here to combine these two especially when we studied with the word uh, rapture now looking at this dragon one more time in verse 3 and another sign appeared in heaven behold a great fiery red dragon having how many heads seven heads and how many horns 10 horns and seven diadems on his heads so we are going to see about this dragon in detail later but for now we just identify who this dragon is so the we identified the woman as israel the child as jesus christ and when identifying the child as jesus christ because of the connections with the heart part so we also identify the body of christ which is the church and now who is this dread dragon so in verse 9 it says so the great dragon was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him so for identifying who this dragon is i am just going to verse 9 in verse 9 it was give, it, the description was given in verse 9 it says so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him so who is the dra- red great dra- red dragon now so the red dragon is the serpent of old because the verse 9 makes it clear and also called the devil and satan so the sometimes it's very easy for us to find out the answers straight there in the bible because in verse 9 it explains what this red dragon is so the great red dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world right from the beginning that is what satan tries to do in the garden of eden first deception went to eve did really god say so you know just a question so deceived uh, eve and uh, adam there who deceives the whole world he was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him if you remember a couple of sessions back couple of chapters back we studied the star falling from heaven and with its with it one third of the stars falling down we already studied that falling now why are we studying that again because as i said all these pieces will fit into uh, one another sometimes the way this book is written is you get, you get a bigger picture and then the details are given later so some of the things if you are seeing again that is the reason so you have the bigger picture and now you are going into more details that's what uh, happening here so it is easy now for us to identify what this red dragon is so you are already most of you have already seen some characters or the cartoons with the red fork you know um, pitchfork with a red suit and all that so this is where they got that so the great red dragon was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and satan 
who deceives the whole world he was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him okay now he is called great because of his vast power he controls the nations of the world and offered them to lord jesus if he would worship him so this offer is the real because sometimes people say no that is not that is not that cannot be taken because if that is not real then the temptation itself is not real jesus was literally tempted because if satan doesn't have that power how can satan go to jesus and say i can offer you this it is something like this if i come to you and tell you that i'm going to give you the new york city so you will laugh at me how do you can you, how how can you give me the new york city because i don't own it right so but and then that that is not even a temptation because if the, the for a temptation to work it has to be reasonable and that is what my point is and now when satan was offering this up so we know that satan had controlled the nations of this world and offered them to lord jesus if he would worship him avoiding the cross worship of himself is satan's ultimate goal the kingdoms of this world are his and he controls them today in that day it was rome but he has controlled every nation so if you look at all the previous um, uh, previous um, empires every time we see satan had some kind of a grip on those nations right from egypt and then you have all those nations listed when we studied the book of daniel we studied all those nations so every nation satan was controlling so that is what we are going to see when we get to chapter 17 i'm going to talk about the seven heads seven all those 10 crowns and all that for now in this chapter i'm not going to expand those details about those description because we are going to study that in chapter 17 so now in verse 6 then the woman that's israel fled into wilderness where she had a place prepared by god that they should feed her there 1260 days remember the situation now we are in the seven year tribulation antichrist will let this israel build their third temple we studied those details earlier and at the midpoint that is after three and a half years now antichrist will walk into this temple and declare himself as god and forced everyone to worship him you remember jesus also pointed this out when you see the abomination of desolation you flee flee into the mountains don't even go down to get your you know pack your bags just flee that's what jesus instructions with that in mind now you look here then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by god that they should feed her there 1260 days wherever you see 1260 days and sometimes we call that 42 months sometimes we call three and a half years it's all the same thing so where does she go uh, we don't know nobody knows but here is my speculation based on what i heard from some scholars it could be petra so israel has to flee to some place where um, uh, uh, israelites would be protected during this time when uh, they are forced to flee when antichrist comes so probably they could flee to petra that's one possibility i'm not saying that is i, I don't know but i'm just giving you some kind of a understanding here in petra jordan so if you look at it this is what it looks like now so if you uh, this this could be the place where they could flee or god could prepare any place for that matter god could easily prepare any place for them but this is one of the places that just comes up every time when somebody studies this topic so i thought of showing you some pictures of petra right now it's just a, a tourist place or some people it's very hard to get in here so that is why people speculate that when antichrist will try to persecute the israelites they would flee to petra and here this is a kind of a vast city uh, so you can study about this petra jordan if you want but this, i just wanted to allude here a little bit on that again now as i said about this dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads and uh, no, we are not going to go into detail about those what those uh, ten uh, horns means and seven heads means we are going to study that later just in passing i want to say this the seven heads most likely symbolize the seven consecutive world empires we are going to study that in revelation 17 with the ten horns resting on the seventh head and representing a rebellious confederacy aligned with the devil and the antichrist 
Yeah, uh, here are the references you can read Revelation 13:2 and then you have Revelation 17:10 and also you can study this in Daniel chapter 7. Of course, if you have already uh, those who attended my uh, Daniel sessions, you can find out Daniel 7 for details on those empires. So the diadems refer to his political cloud. So in verse 9, here is the mind which has wisdom. So Revelation 17:9, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven. mountains on which the woman sits there are also seven kings so just just we are trying to understand this dragon the seven heads with the seven heads and here in revelation 17 of course we are going to go study revelation 17 later but i just want to give you this uh, details here the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits there are also seven kings five have fallen one is and the other has not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short time the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition what is going on here i'm going to explain that when we get to chapter 17 so the point i'm trying to make here is the seven heads represent seven mountains which represent seven kingdoms and all that i'm going to just we are going to study that later in verse 12 the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings okay now you see the 10 horns or 10 kings who have received no kingdom as yet but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast so i'm going to go into detail when we get to chapter 17 just for in passing uh, here because this red dragon has seven heads so you may be wondering what is this seven heads to do so this is where we are going to study so when we get to 17 we are going to study more detail and now verse 7 a war broke out in heaven is there are there wars in heaven i thought <laughs> so here it says a war broke out in heaven so yes there, there is going to be a final war and a war broke out in heaven and who is fighting michael and his angels fought with who the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer it's going to be very interesting right so there's going to be a war in heaven michael and his angels on one side dragon and his angels on the other side guess who's going to win look if god speaks one word he can just um, you know, eliminate the satan and his army everything but god is not involved in this war god is god let michael and his angels fight the war as it seems in verse 7 so and war broke out michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer earlier when satan sin satan lost his position but still satan had access to heaven we need to understand that for us to understand all these passages so when satan sin that is when lucifer the archangel when uh, lucifer sin Lucifer lost his position but not the uh, not the access to heaven so Lucifer still goes to heaven and talks to God and you know uh, how do we know that in Job we read those uh, details right in Job chapter 1 and 2 we study that Satan goes and uh, uh, talks to about to Job and all that so we know that Satan has still access and uh, to heaven but at this time by the time we come to chapter 12 or 7 this is going to be the time when satan will be permanently thrown down to earth and that is the time then this war broke out so now with that understanding and a war broke out in heaven michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer so it's going to be interesting because god is not intervening in this war as we see it uh, but michael was fighting so how do we uh, see the picture because now we know how many angels michael is having and how many angels satan is having at least we if we don't know the number but at least we know satan one third of the angels fell with satan right remember one third of the stars fell with satan so satan is, and his angels when we look at satan and his angels that is one third and the remaining two thirds are with michael the archangel 
So I just wanted to show you, it is not even, uh, uh, you know, so the, the uh, pictorial representation so that you have it in mind. So there is no way Satan can win. So Satan and his angels and Michael and his angels with the two thirds are going to fight this war and Satan will be thrown down from heaven. The great dragon was cast out, the serpent of world called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him. So this is the time when Satan will be thrown down completely from heaven and thrown out of heaven and will never enter into heaven. So that is the time. So after the war with Michael, so the Satan will be, the dragon will be cast out. 9. So the dragon, so the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of world called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. And he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. And verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now the war is over, Satan is thrown out. So now we read verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who is that? Accuser of our brethren, that's Satan, who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. So if you wonder what Satan is doing right now, Satan is accusing about you and me in heaven. So that is what's going on. So that is so for the accuser of our brethren, that is the church, that is us, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So Satan's job is to keep on accusing us. That's why his name is the accuser of the brethren. And they overcame, verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not allow their lives to death. In verse 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, O to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great great wrath because he knows that he has a short time you remember now all the events that are taking place by the time now you get to this point when satan is cast down to earth thrown out of heaven satan is full of wrath full filled with the you know, wrath having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time now satan knows the timing because satan probably had read the book of revelation satan knows the details so you know so when he is thrown down he is having a limited time probably 1260 days that we even may be counting the days now for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time so when you read this verse 12 it is again a split screen kind of a scenario right so therefore rejoice o heavens so on one side you see the heavenly picture the rejoicing and on the other side o to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea so you have a split screen scenario one side the heaven is rejoicing because everything is now taken back and the heaven is rejoicing and now on the other side the earth is filled because satan is thrown down and o to the inhabitants of the earth verse 13 now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the child so when this uh, who again we identified we already identified the woman that is israel now when satan is cast down now he is going to persecute this woman so go after this woman that is israel so going after israel to persecute the israel so let's look what happens but but verse 14 but the woman was given two wings of great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and a times and a half a time Wherever you see the, the meaning, the word time, times and half a time, that is three and a half years. Same, the same is represented as three and a half years. She is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent, that is the dragon, that is the devil, that is the Satan, is now going after this woman, that is Israel. But she is protected on a wings of a great eagle what does that mean so verse 14 how do we interpret this word so but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished you remember when israel came out of uh, egypt they went into a wilderness and there they were protected and if you read exodus and deuteronomy and also some of those are mentioned in psalms there are references it says that God has protected them like on a eagle's wings. Do you see that? So the parallel, 
God protected the Israelites coming out of Egypt in the wilderness like uh, protecting them on a, on a, as a, of wings of an eagle, great eagle. So that is, I personally think that is the great symbolism. I don't think it's a Boeing 447 or 747 or Airbus 800 or whatever. So not those wings. That those, those could be used if they are available at that time. But that is not the idea here. God is going to personally protect this woman that is Israel during this time, just like he protected them when they came out of Egypt. So, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into wilderness to her place. So, whatever that place is, as it could be the Petra that I showed you earlier, Petra, Jordan, or it could be another place where God might have prepared them for them. But God is going to protect them. So, here it says that. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So these Israelites were protected from the wrath of the serpent that is the devil and the Antichrist. We are going to see that. Finally, it was revealed that Satan would pursue Israel into wilderness where God would give her special protection for the final three and a half years, 1260 days of the tribulation period. So those who believe, those who identify, the uh, Jesus Christ, they are being protected uh, miraculously. Verse 15, So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out, uh, spewed out of his mouth. This is kind of, a, you know, this is what John saw. John saw, you know, the woman going into the wilderness and then behind her, the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood uh, after the woman. And now the earth opened it, uh, its mouth and swallowed up the flood. So that is what John saw and he wrote. But how do we interpret this? So the woman we know identified as Israel. When Israel is going out of uh, the, the city, you know, to be uh, protected in a place. So Satan spewed water out of his mouth. So like a flood, wherever you see the flood, the water, it is like people going like a flood. So, you know, there are passages even that says that the enemies are going like a flood after them. So I personally think that probably Antichrist would send armies to go after this, uh, uh, the Israelites to be captured. And then the interesting thing is, here it says, the earth helped the woman. How can the earth help the woman? And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood. If we think the flood is the enemies or the armies of the Antichrist, how can earth help swallow up this flood, of, uh, uh, flood which the dragon has spewed out of his mouth? So for that, we have to go back to again Old Testament for us to understand, can that happen? Can earth help? Can earth be opened? So we all are familiar with this passage in Numbers chapter 16. You know that there was a rebellion against Moses. Uh, we don't have time to go through the whole story, but you know the rebellion. And then this is where we pick up the story. Um, the Moses rose and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart, please, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs lest you be swept away with all their sins. So they got away from the dwelling of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. These are the rebellious group's leaders. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents together with their wives and their sons and their little ones. So here is a rebellious group against Moses and against the Lord. And what happens? And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, and that it, it has not been of my own accord. When Moses was doing all these things, they were thinking that Moses was acting on his own. So that is why the rebellion started. So Moses now is saying, now you see in verse 29, If these men die as all men die, or if they are visited by the fate of all mankind, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates something new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them. And they go down alive into Sheol. Then you know, then you shall know that these men have despised the Lord. Do you see? So now Moses is saying there, going, there is going to be a special kind of a punishment for these people. And you are going to see that and how the ground opens its mouth and swallows them alive. 
so when that happened in the book of numbers will that happen in book of revelation i think so because as i said earlier all this in the book of in the bible works in patterns you know you have a pattern and the pattern repeats again so everything is a pattern here so that is what i personally think and as soon as he has finished speaking all these words the ground under them split apart and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up and with their households and all the people who belong to kora and all their goods so the uh, the rebellious group were swallowed by the earth and there was an earthquake i i think maybe that could happen again when antichrist sent his armies against this woman when they were purchasing after this israel the earth opens and then swallows them up alive verse 33 so they and all that belonged to them went alive into sheol and the earth closed over them and they perished from the midst of the assembly could that happen in revelation yes it could happen god could protect them on eagle's wings take them into the wilderness wherever that is it could be petra or some other place and when the armies started going after them chasing after this israel i think there is a miraculously there may be an earthquake or something that would swallow all these armies uh, enemies this is not the first time this is we have seen this happen with you know the pharaoh remember this old pharaoh sent out uh, uh, his armies after israel when they were going at to, uh, towards the red sea and what happened when they walked through the red sea and they tried to follow them and then they were all swallowed or um, perished in the red sea drowned in the red sea okay now 17th verse and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring so the dragon tried to go after israel that did not work because that swallowed their armies so now what is the dragon doing the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ hmm this is interesting so there are two groups of people one you identify clearly the woman that is israel that is the jewish people and now here is another group of people rest of her offspring but then the rest of her offspring details are given who are they who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ how does that sound like that sound like a christian but christians are already raptured now who are these christians so these are the tribulation saints so in the tribulation there will be people those who will come to know the saving knowledge of jesus christ and who keep his commandments and have the testimony of jesus christ and now satan is going after the tribulation saints so during this tribulation there will be people that those who will not worship satan those who will deny following satan and now satan because you know, he tried to go after the woman that is israel that did not work out now he is going after the remnant or the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ so that is what we are going to see in verse 17 now the we started with the end time key characters um now we identified pretty much everybody here so the woman in chapter 12 we studied the woman is israel the male child jesus christ the red dragon is the satan and the michael the archangel is going to fight with his angels against the dragon rest of her offspring the seed of woman that is the saved israel or the uh, it could be also the gentiles who who gave their lives to christ um, so you need to make a correction there it's not just the saved israel that's also the gentiles who will believe and uh, uh, in jesus christ they are also the offspring of the woman through jesus christ because they place their faith in jesus christ and now the other things in chapter uh, 13 we are going to see the beast from the sea which is the antichrist and the beast from the earth the false prophet in the next session in chapter 13 so thank you for watching we concluded chapter 12 which is very interesting so if you like this videos please do subscribe to this channel if you like this video please give a like uh, and also you can watch my blog at mydailydevotion.org thank you for watching Thank you.